program to bring you this important message. Yo, it's remember the show. Slick with the flows, where the sparring can go. Who's gonna be on, man? You never will know. Guess you better tune in, cause we live from Chicago. Bilal Muhammad, that's the king of the tweets. Jason Hannick looks like John, step his hands to his feet. Every Thursday, we gon' give you a treat. It's remember the show, hit play and repeat. Uh. And retweet, and retweet, and retweet, and retweet. It's remember the show, hit play and repeat. Huh? Really, we got a game show tonight? We are live with the game show. Game show's back and we are hot. Episode 57, remember the show. Got a game show tonight. Jason Anik, the growing legend is Bilal Muhammad. Pay-per-view week, UFC 272, Covington, Masvidal. Cody used the word toxic, our director, Cody Marrow. Toxic is the perfect word for this relationship. I hope they have some reinforcements at the face-off, not named Sean Shelby, bro. <laughs> Wait, talk to me. Yeah, it's, it's going to be one of those weeks where Dana's going to have to be ready. He's going to have to be well-rested. Get his carbs in. We need Swolgain out there right now. Yeah, we need we need to be ready because I ain't trying to have anything mess up this week. We already lost the physique fight, and I was excited for that physique and RDA fight. I hear you. Uh, but this main event, this is the one that everybody wants to see. Everybody wants to see how it's going to go. All the trash talk, all the buildup, and the pressure. The pressure uh, for both these guys, honestly, it's like you have to win this fight because the loser of this fight, the, their career is going to go a, a, a whole different way. The winner, you, you're back in the title talks. You're back in a huge fight talks. You're back in big uh, money talks. So a lot's going to change after this week. Well, obviously, we'll talk a lot about that. We got we got a few guests tonight, so it should be interesting. So back to last weekend. Love seeing Bilal in the corner. Love seeing all the costume changes. <laughs> um, 3-0 and in the corner, yes? Yeah, you know, we had a we had an easy week. Uh, <laughs> came out there. People don't know how good I am in the corner. I, my record in the right corner before it's this. It's true. Dude, sorry. I, it is true. It's not hyperbole. Go ahead. My record in the corner, I've been 19-1 and one as a cornerman. Uh, 20 of those fights were for Lewis Taylor, who was just a dominant force <laughs> and really didn't need me. But, hey, I'm, I'm counting those wins on my record, so I'm taking those wins no matter what. <laughs> dude, I hear you. But it's also – dude, you, look, there's enough – there's enough televised content of you in the corner to, to know, you know, it matters, you know, and I, you know, I love Lou in your corner. So you learn from Lou too, coaching you. Um, yeah. You know, it's, I feel like it's, it's, it makes the, the, the fight a lot more smoother. And because you're, you got a guy in the corner who's training with you and see stuff and active fighter. I feel like we're seeing it more and more now where active fighters are being great corners. Glover yeah. Scherer is out there this weekend too. He looked good in the corner. James Krause was an active fighter and a coach. Yep. And I feel like, we're the guys that are actually in there right now. We're seeing stuff right now. So we see a different way of doing it. We get a different feel in there. Obviously, my head coach, is Mike Valley, is still going to be the the eyes and ears, the X's and O's guy. But, like, I'll see different details maybe that he doesn't see. And, you know, we, we meshed very well. And I felt like it was really good this week. And Nacho, I told you guys, this guy's going to be a force. This guy mm. showed it this week. Uh, they gave us the option. They told us, yo, your guy missed weight by four pounds. He's not trying to cut it. You don't have to fight. And Nacho was like, no, I'm down. I'm ready here. My dad flew from Chile. We're ready to go. And the fact that he did that, I'm like, yeah, it just showed me what type of guy he is. You didn't want that. Just, you didn't want that show money. He wanted both uh, checks and he got it. You know, it's really fascinating for me to follow some of these young guys in a different way because of their connection to you, you know, and I like I didn't follow your career at some of those stages. And I love seeing I love the ups and downs, too. You know, I love seeing the losses, seeing the way they bounce back. Just great for Nacho. Um, you had to have a great night, man. Yeah, it was amazing. Uh, it, it just because I've seen the work that he puts in. I've seen the work that these guys put in. My other guy, Carlos Hernandez, that was his UFC debut. And he's the guy that works a full-time job too. And I see how hard he's working. And, you know, just to see it paying off. Because we got a lot of young guys in the gym. And then when you see other guys in your gym, other young athletes in the gym winning, where our gym is riding high right now with uh, me. Uh, we got the champ, Juliana Pena. Then both these guys come out with a win. It just gets these younger guys more motivated. And I'm seeing it this week, just coming back, like, how everybody's trying to push extra harder at the gym. Everybody's trying to wants to get to that level now. So it's cool seeing it now. And uh, you know, seeing Ignacio, they're they're talking about him being on the Latino desk uh for analysts. That's wow. so I'm like seeing a guy, seeing him, I'm like, bro, this is the guy, this is where I want to see him 
And it's it's cool that it's all paying off because, like I said, this guy was he moved out here from Chile by himself with no with none of his family here, and he had a dream in mind, and you know he's achieving it. It's awesome. Well, and I'm sure you've set a great example for him. Now he can flash, he can flash that smile on television, <laughs> call him fights. Um, you know, I got I got to mention Cain Velasquez's name just because I can't get him off of my mind, and I'm not necessarily trying to go down any sort of rabbit hole other than just saying like, what the fuck, and like hard not to understand where dude's coming from. Don't know all the details. Saw some footage today of the truck, man. It's just nuts, bro. Um, I can't get it off my mind. I didn't think I was going to bring it up. I see your face. I can't help but bring it up, bro. No, I like, yeah. Like anybody, I don't care who you are, what type of man you are, whether you're a, a fighter or not a fighter, anybody would have that same reaction. If somebody hurts anybody in my family or anybody I know, uh, you know, when you're messing with kids and you're, you're, you're doing that type of thing. And the fact that this guy was out on bond, like he was, he was out free. Like, I think that's the bigger issue here. It's not that Cain Velasquez took the law into his own hands. It's like the law should have took the law into their own hands. Like this guy shouldn't have been out on the streets. When you have somebody like that, that a pedophile and disgusting, does disgusting things to kids. Like that guy should have life. That guy should get the death penalty. There's nothing, nothing that Cain did that I'm going to sit there and be like, I wouldn't do the same thing because anybody would do the same exact thing. And we would all be in that same thing right where he is right now. And I'm just hoping and I'm praying that the jury and the judge will had that same feeling and they won't put him behind bars for these 20 years that people are talking. Uh, I know that, you know, sometimes you don't want to sit there and bring out a gun or shoot things because worse things could have happened. But like I said, when, when you're seeing red and you're in that, that mode and you're seeing what this guy did to somebody that, you know, like, anybody would be in his shoes would do the same exact thing. And if I see something like that, I'm definitely going to be doing worse. Like that guy would definitely be <laughs> underground. That was, my, that was my first reaction too. And I just, I, I can't get it off my mind. So, um, came for last beautiful week, that you know. everybody's supporting it though. I love the UFC. I love even Dana White said that he would do the same thing too. So it's like cool seeing that everybody has the support. And like I said, I'm just hoping and praying that like he gets the right lawyers, the right people around him, the right judge state of mind and everything like that, where, you know, he could get off. Anyway, nuts. So Islam Makhachev, um, I know you were around that crew a little bit. Um, just unbelievable to watch. Um, those guys dominating on the ground so physically is becoming a real problem no matter what division. I'm sure you think about that a lot, and I see you cut from a similar cloth in a lot of your fights. Um, so anyway, obviously quick work of Bobby Green. Bobby Green, the quick turn, kind of is what it is. Um, you know. But Islam, he's fighting next for the title, is he not? Yeah, that's the thing. Uh, being able to train down there with these guys and, you know, you're being coached by the Michael Jordan of your sport. That's Khabib is considered the GOAT, the, the best ever. And you've seen what he did and how dominant he was. And these guys get to work with him. I was able to train with them uh, and see his mindset and the way that he, he forces these guys to train and the mindset of everybody at that practice. They're all on that same mindset. It's just a disciplined mindset. There's no tricks to it you know i was i went walk backstage and uh somebody told me like oh it's that, that was easy huh and i'm like no it's not easy because you don't see what they do in the practice rooms in the practice rooms they're going hard every single day my body was feeling like i needed a massage i needed a uh you ever watch that movie wanted where they we did that that white bad thing where you you need yeah. your whole body i need one of those after every <laughs> single day uh so I know the work these guys put in. And like I said, when, uh, you know, he had a last minute opponent change, I knew that he was going to accept it no matter what, uh, because these guys don't care who's in front of them. They train for everybody and they do the same thing no matter what. There's nobody out here that's going to stop it in that division. And grappling is king in the sport. And then these guys have the grappling. These guys have the pressure. These guys have the cardio. These guys have the strength. And Islam proved it. The only thing now that he messed up a little bit on is agreeing to the RDA fight and making it a Twitter war and saying that he would agree to it. And then I don't know what happened behind the scenes. And then, you know, now you got everybody, oh, you were just, you were just lying. You just did it for the clout and blah, blah, blah. Like if people don't understand, there's so much contract talks and stuff that need to happen. And there's also little injuries that you don't even realize that you have until a couple of days after your fight. Mm -hmm. So like, I know his fight was pretty easy, but you know, you're still ground uponing Bobby Green and sometimes your knuckle gets swollen. Something like that happens. You get a little hurt. He has to cut weight again. So there's a lot of things that people don't understand. Obviously, yeah, he's going to – he talked trash to RDA and people are, like, mad at him for it. But, like I said, there's there's other things behind the scenes that people don't really realize what goes on. Yeah. So if Islam were to face Oliveira or Gaethje, 
Um, you know, a lot of people think he'd be favored against either one. Um, you know, if forced to just comment on that now, I mean, do you like him matched up against both those guys? Yeah, I like a matchup against anybody in division. Um, honestly, I feel like the toughest test for him would have been Benio Darwish. Uh, obviously, yeah, I know. I think that uh, the only issue with Oliveira, Oliveira is good everywhere, good on the ground, good stand up, but he's comfortable on his back. Darwish is a guy that's going to scramble with you. He's going to keep going. He's going to shoot on you more times, and he's going to make it uh, chaotic in there. And I feel like he's not just going to lay on his back and let you stay on top of him. And that's what these guys flourish on. Like we saw even when Oliveira fought Felder, his last uh, his last loss. You know, he went on his back. He almost got him in a Darce. Felder got out of it. And then fell the ground and pounded him from there. And if you got a, a, a Dagestani, a Islam Makachev in your guard, ground and pounding you, he's going to break you the same way. And uh, I feel like Darush won't let that happen. Uh, it'll be more of a scramble. It'll be more of a war. Uh, and with Gaethje, I feel like with what we've seen and what we saw against Habib is that he had really nothing on the ground. And he didn't show that he had anything on the ground. And, you know, you're fighting the greatest grappler in the sport and you didn't show anything off your back at all. And I know this; it's just a different feel when you're going against a guy like that, but you like you didn't show anything. So from what I've seen of Gaethje, I don't think that if Islam will – fighting Islam would be anything different if Islam takes him down. I love it. I That, that division just fascinates me. Anyway. Uh, yeah. we. I mean, we saw the other Arman that weekend look so dominant. That's crazy how – and him and Islam had a war when they first got – I know it was a very short notice. I know Islam was sick. But still, this guy is another problem in the in the division. And he's on the come-ups. And he's another guy with great grappling. And we show what top game pressure would do. I don't care how good your jiu-jitsu is, how good, how much of a black belt you are. If you're on your back, crazy things will happen. You're not winning a fight off your back. Well, and, you know, Ramiz, and we'll talk to him about his fight. But just watching just what, what he did, just, you know, just that was a tough, five, tough two minutes for his opponent. You could be sure. You know what I mean? That was no fun. Yeah, he's another guy, too. We're like... When I'm say when I say about like I'm proud of these guys, like he's another guy. He's only been in the UFC for three fights, and two of his fights were against guys with 20 fight UFC veterans. He had he went against Max Griffin his first debut, and it's like, dang, this is a guy. This is Ramiz's right. debut. Why are you giving him Max Griffin right away? Then all right, you know he goes to war with them, loses his ear. Second fight, he goes yeah, in there against Jesus. somebody that's on the same level, and he finishes him in the first minute. Third fight, you go against Court McGee, who has a, a dirty style, a dog style, and right? Who never lost finished. four straight. I think yeah, and you he's, know. he's he's been a, he's just a dominant force, and he has, just has a crazy grinding style for anybody in the division. I don't care how good you are. So you know you lost there. So then you know you're sitting there like, oh, is he gonna be on the ground? And here he is, right here. We're talking about exactly. him right now. And then he comes out this third, this fourth fight when it's all on the line, and he gets a finish in the first round dominantly, and he just shows that the UFC needs to resign him, give him a new deal, and give him these guys that he can just walk through. We'll, we'll know if you're a real fighter if you get through Ramirez. Hey, if you get the remedies, you're a real fighter. What up, my brother? What up, Welcome baby? back. <laughs> we were so just we got talking you here about back. you. We wanted we asked you to come on the show again, and we, you know we had a couple issues the first time with the whole crop uh, Crocs idea. So we're bringing you back. We, we got a real sponsor this time. We got real Crocs on the line. So if you win tonight, you get your Crocs. All right. Oh man, oh. I, I should have gotten my Crocs the first time. I'm the defending <laughs> champ, man. Right. <laughs> Don't worry, these are going to be way better, Crocs. What's up, my brother? What's up, Terrence? What's up, man? Good to be here, man. What's up, you guys? Look at you, boys. So a couple first-round submissions, and, and now you're on Remember the Show. Nice and easy, huh? Yes, Hell sir. Yeah. Love it. No injuries. Both of you guys are looking pretty right now. Uh, you guys- oh, <laughs> oh, there, there we is. go. <laughs> nice and punctual. There he is. Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. How are you? What up, champ? Good. Let it begin. Yeah, you got to welcome. I feel good. I feel good, man. I just watched that fucking the thing. Face off. Oh, the face off with uh, Masvidal and Kobe. Yeah, it was ridiculous. <laughs> Who do you got this weekend? It's tough to say, man. Who knows? It's I, I'm just watching. I can't choose. I don't want anyone mad at me in the streets. <laughs> we know everybody's <laughs> hearts are with Masvidal, but we know everybody's head. Like, where's your head at, Ramiz? Who you picking this weekend? Like you got to listen, 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 listen. I like I like Masvidal a lot. I hope he could pull it off, but uh, it's like you said, you know. Um, unfortunately, I think the 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 mind that maybe the safe bet is uh, Colby, but you just you never know with Masvidal, man. He, you just don't know, man. I think if Colby stands long enough, he's gonna probably get clipped by Masvidal on one of those exchanges, and things might go south real quick for him. 
Now, action! Did you watch my boys win this last weekend? Did you see where me is out here first round finish? Of course! Congratulations to both of you, man! Incredible finishes! Oh, thank you, brother! Thank you, sir! Of course! Are you kidding me? Are you like you're, you're a fan? Next. You're watching all you're these uh, fights? You're next, but uh, let's go! My brother, appreciate you, baby. Yeah, oh, man, we're coming up April sixteenth. I watch everything, start to finish. I never miss it. My brother, and I see that you're out here working out again. Are you doing any? Uh, you know, obviously you had a big change where right when the COVID hit and everything like that, you changed your whole life. You were, now you're out here training 10 times a day, changing your whole body, your whole lifestyle. You thinking about getting in this uh, ring? You seeing all these celebrity boxing and everything out here? <laughs> Hell no. I'm fucking almost 40 years old, brother. <laughs> Dude, you I'll still got to go this year. 42. I'll grapple somebody for sure. I'll grapple. <laughs> you're grappling right now? No, I I would. I definitely have a background and some sort of ability to grapple and hug and fucking hold someone down. <laughs> you know we see I mean? that you also did uh, music for Kane. Are you? How are you with uh, AEW? Are you? Yeah, are you a big fan uh, of AEW? Are you watching it? Hook, for Young Hook, man, he's the uh, he's the young legend. He's gonna be a superstar. He already is. AEW. I mean, I'm not a big. I used to be a humongous wrestling fan. I haven't been watching it in a long time, but. The homie Taz from back in the day, ECW, came through, asked me to do it for his son. And it was a pleasure. And, you know, we got to ask you, what what you've been known for your whole life, just the, the, the places you've eaten, the best things you've eaten. Where is the best place you've eaten? Like, what country, What where is the best place you, you want to go back to? Where you're like, man, I got to think about this meal. That's where I want to go back to. Man, there's I always I always think about places everywhere I go. I have you know I have hidden gems everywhere. It's like I always love going back to Paris. There's no doubt about that. Paris has some incredible food, but I'm I'm fucking done with that, bro. Don't get me out here thinking <laughs> about all that shit. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to be jacked. I'm love trying it. to be shredded before forty. I don't know if that's gonna happen, but I'm gonna work towards it. You're all I believe in you, brother. Thank you, man. That's Let's what I need. It. See, thank you. Just gotta you. stay consistent. That's the hugest part. I mean, I just, I don't know how much more consistent I could get. I need some help with my nutrition. That's really the situation. Right now, what's your nutrition? Let's talk about nutrition. Are we talking? You you know you said you eat all around the world. Yep. Now we talking Chicago style pizza or New York style pizza? And I, like you gotta just be honest. It ain't nothing. Like don't make it, it personal. Enough. New it's York, not, baby. Like, yeah, there's no comparison, really. They're both nah, two different not, things. Man, They're two different things. New York pizza is portable and stuff like that. It's what it's known for. You know, it's known to be able to eat on the run. I love Chicago style pizza, but you got to sit there. <laughs> you know, you got to sit there and you got to really like cut it. And I love it. There's no doubt about it. But it's different things. East Coast, Beast Coast, baby. <laughs> T-Rex, where are you eating? Oh, you eating Chicago, Chicago style pizza? I love Chicago. Chicago. Don't get it twisted. I love uh, Chicago. Chicago style, of course. See, yep. there you go. My brother right there. <laughs> get more goods. I like the cr – listen, I love the crust. I love it all. That's my problem. I love too many things. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's always the issue. And that's, that's what I tell guys, right after cutting weight, uh, you go straight to eating everything you can eat. And that's what I say when people are, like, talking about Islam. Like, oh, why is Islam – Talking about this fight at 170 this time, I'm like, bro, right after you win a fight, T-Rex, how much you weighing right now? You told me you used to walk around at 190. Like, what are you walking around at right now? Um, I'm trying to keep my weight low right now, but I'm already like 175-ish. Exactly. Literally, it takes one day, and then you put these 20 pounds on so easily where you're not even realizing it. It's like the fucking Atkins diet. It's like keto. Literally, you I tell people, that garbage, you eat one it's piece just of bread nice to eat, man. It's just so nice to eat, you know what I mean? <laughs> Go crazy. Right? You get to eat all the goods, man. Yeah, and I tell people, I'm like, bro, I feel like I'll eat a one bowl of cereal and I'll gain like eight pounds. And I'm like, how the hell is this even happening? It's because you're focused on it. You're like, I need to lose weight. I need to lose weight. But then you eat some snack. All of a sudden, it's like 10 pounds later. You're like, what the hell? Just What did I just eat right now? You look at the carbs and like, how is this even working? It's my whole life, bro. It's my life. <laughs> But, hey, we got you guys all here. Let's start this game show, Cody. Let's turn it up. All right, we're 
This is Bilal's show. I like gentlemen. that music. All you, all you, yeah, right? All you, gotta, all you gotta know is you say bully if you know the answer. Shout bully for the buzzer. This three-man right. game, we'll see how Cody figures this out. Wrong answer. The point's probably going to go to both opponents. Right answer points goes to you. Uh, but you just got to shout bully if you know the answer. That's about it. Good luck. All right. Well, so with this one, if there's a wrong answer, we'll give a chance to one of the other two to steal the question. If he gets the answers, he gets the points. So, Rabiz, I owe you a pair of Crocs. So the winner of this show today gets a pair of Crocs. Fresh. <laughs> You give me your address, 100%. Are, are you rocking Crocs? Are either of you two rocking Crocs? No, I've been rocking I'm Crocs rocking the years, Crocs. man. <laughs> no, people are sleeping out of Crocs, man. They're, they're both Bro, I'll, I'll, I'll take some. I'll take some, some fresh, low-top Air Forces. Which Actually, color? I wouldn't be rocking Crocs too much, brother, but Bilal said they got lost in transit. Which color, Which color Air, Air Forces? Forces? Just the all white ones. I can't wear the black ones, you know. They, I'm like, yeah, I'm like, that's that's fight week. That's fight week. <laughs> that's fight week. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So you get to choose either Crocs or low top Air Forces. You got to win the show first. They're right, the category. Right, I know, today, I know. That's the deal. I, I, it's a good year for me so far. <laughs> first, ca- first category: name scramble. These are all fighter names on this weekend's card. The letters of their name are scrambled. You just got to tell me. On scramble and come at who it is. Okay. Second one. Who is she? These are guy fighters with girl filters. So these are one guy fighter with a girl filter. Okay. Then face mash. Now this is two fighter faces mashed together. You gotta tell me which two fighters they are. Uh well, this is like a mixture of Jeopardy, Wheel of Fortune, fucking Price is right. <laughs> I love it. We put it all together. I'm very familiar <laughs> with these types of games. <laughs> And then the nickname game. This you, this is the fighter nickname. You got to tell me what his nickname is. All these guys are fighting this weekend. All popular fighters. You guys should let me know who it is. Ramiz, you are the defending, the reigning champion. So I'll let you pick the first category. Let but me get name scramble for 400. Mm. Anybody can yell out oh, bully. If you know the name, yell out man. bully. You got oh. the answer, yell bully. Yeah, bully. Bronson. Dos Anjos. Oh, comes out high. There you go. Damn. Damn, you came out hard. You asked for the 400 right away, Ramiz, and you lost. What the? What's going on here? All right. Let's, let's, go, go. let's go nickname game for 400. That, hurt. Nickname game 400. Yeah, let's go there. The Prince of War. Bully. Bully. Bronson. Greg, Har- Greg Hardy. Damn. Bang. Damn. Dude, he wasn't lying. We got an expert here. Let's Actually, go. You go Nickname game for 300. 300. Kevin Holland. Bully. Reaction. Fuck, I forgot. I'm high. Bully. <laughs> Bully. Ramiz. Trailblazer. There we go. Okay. Ramiz, I knew that. I love That's one of my favorite Chevrolets. <laughs> Ramiz, you pick. This, this, this is a sad day. Bully, me. name scramble for 300. Name scramble 300. Bully. Bully. Oh. Ramiz. Um, Three, two, one. Terrence. Oh, crap. Oh, man. You, how did both of you guys say bully? None of you guys know the answer. I thought I had it, but no. Action, I got it in there. I'm going to know once you've. Once you flip it, if we all lose, we get the point. You what? Mm-hmm. How? Action how is, is the that only one that didn't say bully, so he gets the point. That did not look like no I keep the points. Come on, I know, I know this game. <laughs> Told you, Albanian grandmothers knitting during these games. I watch. <laughs> <laughs> knitting tentena. You already know what I miss. Of course. <laughs> you pick your action. All right, let's go. Face smash for four hundred. Face match 400. Two fighter faces here. Bully. <laughs> Ravis. Charles Oliveira and, uh, and uh, Conor McGregor. Conor. Boom. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Good job. That was a good. Come on, Terrence. You're out here getting killed. I'm getting murdered. Hopefully car. I can fight better next time. Talk about let me get some white Air Force Ones. <laughs> let, me get, <laughs> let me get a face mask for 300. Face uh, mask 300. Bully. <laughs> Ramiz. That's going to be the Iceman Chuck Liddell and DC Daniel Cormier, baby. That's a good one right there. I like that. Dang it. 
Man, uh, this is a close one right here. We got the Albanians going at it. You're up, please. Let, let, let me get face mask for 200. Face mask 200. Bully. 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 Action. Darren Till and Patty Pimblett. Come on, action. No. Bully. Bully. Oh, Bully. And Ravis. That is going to be. Uh, Patty Bimblet and Dustin Poirier, man. Yes. Oh, man. You got it. The eyes look this the This guy got the eyes. This guy's oh, man. Ramiz is killing face mask. He's walking through man, this category. Bro. Yeah, Let me I go have... ahead and get face mask for 100. I'm on LSD Thank you. also, so this is freaking me out. <laughs> Bully. Yo. Uh, Kamsad and uh, Gilbert Burns. Gary, all yes. right. Tats on the board. Tats on the board. Yeah. Yeah. I Bro, do me just do me one favor. Never do that face mash again, please. Oh, that looked that looked disgusting. I never <laughs> want to see that again. That last one was phenomenal. <laughs> All right, Terrence, you're on the board. Game, you pick. Our uh, nickname game 200. 200 nickname game. Bryce Holy Mitchell. Bryce Mitchell. Action. Thug nasty. Yeah. There we go. Woo! This one's a close one. Dude, he's he's back in the lead. Who is she for 400? 400? Okay, who is she? 400. This is a guy fighter with a girl filter. <laughs> Yo, this is one guy. Damn, we don't get no hints. Dominic Cruz. I need a bully and I need an answer. Uh, bully TJ Dillashaw. Can you just remember Dominic Cruz and TJ Dillashaw. No, that's <laughs> wrong. Can we get a hint? I'll give you, I'll give you one hint. He's from Stockton. Bully. Bully. Action. Nate Diaz. Diaz. Nate Diaz. I said it first. I said it first. Ah, let's I go. said it first. Ah. Ashley gets the point. Terrence, you got one wrong already. You talking about TJ Dillashaw, Dominic <laughs> Cruz. Actually, you go again. All right, let's go uh, name scramble for two. Name scramble for two. B Bully. Ramiz. Brian Kelleher. There we go. Okay. Oh. Woo, she's coming back. I'm actually Dude, embarrassed. This is coming out to the wire. <laughs> All righty, let me get who is she for 300? Who is she for 300? <laughs> bully. <laughs> I said bully. Thank you, Dustin Poirier, please. Dude, the diamond. It was the tattoo. It was the tattoo. Here we go. You have all these first round finishes, but you can't even win a game show, Terrence. What's going on? Yeah. Here? Let me get. Let me get. Who is she for two hundred, please? <laughs> Ramiz is getting cocky. <laughs> Action. Bully. Show Ramiz. me more of the neck. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, man. I don't know. Oh wait, I know who that is. Cub Swanson. Come on, that should know. Ramiz? Let me get a hit, bully. That was a good guess. Tell me that wasn't a good guess. No, that Close was guess. a good guess. I can't give you a hint because you already tried it. Oh, wait. Bully. Who called bully? bully? Yeah. Terrence. Tim Elliott. Come on, Terrence. No. <laughs> Can I get a hit now that I'm the last one? <laughs> I can't give you a hit now because the game is too close between you and action. You got it tied. Oh. But you get one shot right now. Let me see the let me see the tattoos real quick. <laughs> oh, what the oh. Come on! Oh. It's right there. <laughs> Damn, Who's, bro. I would have never got that. <laughs> All right, this game is close right here. There's 300 points on the board. We got a tie game right here. And Terrence, you just gotta you need something right now. I need something. I'm, just, I'm just happy I'm on the board, you know. It could have been worse. <laughs> All right, Ramiz, you get the pick. Let me do nickname game for 100. This is big right here. Bully. Bully. Terrence. You're out here yelling bully. bully. You don't even know the answer. Bully. I got it. I got it. Bully. For me. Bully. It's going to be Junior. Woo. That was big. Can yeah. I contest the, the calling of my bully? Like, what's up? I called you, you it. Call it. Oh, shit. My bad. You guys got to tie Oh, yeah. you guys had that New York accent. I can hear it. Since I got beat so bad, I'll, I'll wear Crocs to the fight. All right, hey, hey, action. You got you got the next one, baby. Let's go. Nah, right, man, I'm contesting. <laughs> it's fair. That was fair. Here. Go ahead, Hello, action, you're up. Come on, bro. Don't be like fucking uh, Herb Dean over here. <laughs> I right, action. You get to pick next category. This is big. 
Name scramble for a hundred. Name scramble for a hundred. This one's big. Shit. I got All it. Right. Really? George Masvidal. Oh, go! Damn. Wow. I gave. Oh my god. Terrence, Who I can't even see both this one. I can't even see one of these two at the one this one. Let's go. Whew, here we go. Here we go. Bully. Action. George St. Pierre. Come on, action. No. Bully. Bully. Ramiz. Who is Justin Gaethje? Oh. Hey. hey. Overnight. Overnight. Do you understand? The reigning, defending RTS oh. champ. The double champ does whatever the fuck he wants. Oh, I'm so embarrassed. Dog, man, your eyes are good, man. Hey. I'm impressed. How did hey. you see those shoulders, bro? I'm beyond impressed. <laughs> hey. How did you I know those shoulders? I am not the two-time RTS champ for no reason, baby. Yeah, hey, sir. seriously, yeah. though, Action made this shit too close, bro. That because was... he's Albanian, bro. He, he made that He made that little uh, <laughs> that little nationalism come out of both of us, bro. We got too competitive. We got heated. That was a war. We got right heated there. in there. It was a war zone, baby. Dude, you know your UFC, though. No doubt about it. You, yeah. You're watching it, no doubt. Hell you know, yeah. I've been watching since I was a kid, man. They had the black box. My man, Ronnie Rango, he had the black box free cable. You know what I'm saying? The illegal cable box, the baby. <laughs> yeah. So you had fucking porno. You had, you had fucking HBO before that was available. It was like 58, 59, 60, 61. Spice. Oh, yeah. Spice <laughs> channel, baby. It's good. You had a flip before. I, in my house, I had a flip in between so I could catch a little tit or something. <laughs> <laughs> but we out here, man. Congratulations, brother. Action, you the man, baby. Terrence, you the Rex, man, baby. That was a phenomenal. Hey, that was crazy, man. That was a crazy battle, man. Congrats again. Hey, two times. Two times. Two times. Time. Appreciate, I appreciate all you guys coming on the show. Thank you guys so much. Ramiz. Hey, action. Listen, this dude, address, this getting, dude owes me a pair of Yeezy slides <laughs> and Crocs. Nah, yeah, you don't, need those, let him you don't need those. Get the Tim. He needs that. Yeah, get some Tims and some Air Ones. You good to All go. right, get, get me some beef and broccoli Tims then below. <laughs> hey, he's in your division. Just hey, he's in your division. Just call him out, Ramiz. Right? There it is. <laughs> I already did it my post by freaking uh, interview, man. <laughs> Uh, hey, now, nah, but for real, hey, thank you guys all coming on. I appreciate you guys. Yes. You're the man, action. Appreciate you, T Rex, Ramiz. Yes, Pleasure, right, boys. You guys later, T Rex. Later, later, guys. Yeah. Jason. Yes. Thank, thank you, boys. See you guys Peace. soon, baby. Peace out, Stay my up. brother. Later. Dude, love it. Now we can talk about. US dude, and that was a music. show, man. Was great, I, dude. Ash just said he was a, a fan, but dude, he knew everything. He was a, no he, he's a real question. fan. Absolutely, I love it, man. Love it. That was great, man. Good shit. So, dude, this this fight card is stacked um, coming up this weekend. So, we're going to talk about three of them as we usually do. Marrow's on fire tonight. Let's get the bullies bix, please, sir. Even though McKinney didn't really perform in the game show... You and Cody, that was great with the three man. That worked well. That was the best we've done with the three man game show. Three man game show isn't always that easy, you know. Yeah, that, that was smooth. Action. I, was know, I know Terrence was terrible, but you know we we still ran a very smooth show. Absolutely. <laughs> I meant to tell Ramiz he his his presser where he shouted us out three times. I love it. Anyway. Oh yeah. So I I'm not lying when I tell you I'm actually looking forward to Edson Barboza Bryce Mitchell more than any fight. But more than Mosfet, like like to me, the Mosfetal Covington is it's it's like in that entertainment slot for me. It's not. It's a little bit of the, they both lost twice to the current champ. Am I wrong? Exactly. Yeah. But anyway, so we're gonna start with Edson Barbosa, Thug Nasty. Um, dude, I can't. I just can't wait. So Barbosa lost to Giga back in August. Had one two straight prior. I believe it's Barbosa's twenty seventh UFC fight. Um, it's unbelievable on this card. Cowboy Oliveira, I think, has in the 20 in appearances. And then Rafael Dos Anjos. It's unbelievable, man, some of these guys. The UFC appearances is nuts. So anyway, Bryce Mitchell's favorite in Vegas hasn't lost. He's undefeated. Um, he hasn't fought since Halloween 2020. So Edson Barbosa's uh, the underdog here 
amazing how many different guys he's fought over the years. Thug Nasty. I, I don't know, man. Who do you like here? I, I really could go either way. Yeah, it's crazy how much of an underdog uh, Barbosa is, even though he's fought literally the best of the best. He was in there with the Kevin Lee. He was in there with Khabib. So, like, he's seen no, right. the style uh, that Bryce Mitchell is going to bring, he, the the heavy grappling, the heavy wrestling. Um, the only thing is, for me, is I don't think Bryce Mitchell's stand-up is where those other guys' stand-up was. And especially that long layoff. Uh, I know he's had injuries with his hand. He gets hit a lot before he enters. And, you know, we've seen guys being able to defend a couple of his takedowns. When he's on the ground, this guy's a dog. He's, his transitions are very well. His submissions are crazy good. Um but I think it just comes down to Barbosa's experience level. He's been in there with some of the strongest grapplers at 155. Now he's at 45. And I think that with his fast kicks, his striking, uh, his hands, we've seen what he just did to St. Burgos a couple fights ago. Like, And Burgos is no joke in that division. I think that Barbosa will be able to get this one free. I think he'll be able to get out of this one. And uh, I think we're going to see a finish here with Barbosa here. You know, and and if, if Bryce Mitchell gets through Barbosa in any way, even being being the favorite, um, there there are a lot of people that don't know that name Bryce Mitchell that should know that name now. And if he wins this fight, you can be sure. Yeah, I was, I should have, I was gonna ask uh, action if he listens to any of these UFC's rappers. Uh, I was just listening uh, Bryce Mitchell today. He spit like a flow, and he was just like, uh, "Yeah, I don't want to be the best UFC rapper. I want to be the best rapper rapper." And I'm like, "His stuff is decent. It's not bad." <laughs> but you know, especially you know, if you win here. Then yeah, you know, you'll be having some people calling out, let's get a CD from Bryce Mitchell or something like that. You'll get some record deals. Absolutely. <laughs> I mean, the, the nickname will serve him well. Thug Nasty, that'll work. Just yeah, he gets rap this, this, this Arkin, the kid from Arkansas here rapping, dude, he'll get some people to throw him on their CD. No question. Anyway, can't wait for that one. Co-main event. Um, this one came together quickly. Uh obviously Islam threw his name in the in the mix. So Dos Anjos, it's been a long time since he, he hasn't fought since he fought Felder, November of 2020. And uh, almost wasn't going to fight this weekend. So Moicano steps in. Uh, impressive win very recently, February 12th, uh, choking out Alexander Hernandez. So Dos Anjos flip of opponent here. He was training for a five-round fight, even though it was a co-main event. So who do you like here in the co-main, Mr. Muhammad? Man, it's crazy how these odds are so close. Uh, Dos Anjos, like I said, another guy with huge experience, been in there with the best of the best. <clears throat> I know that Moicano has also been in there with some great fighters, he almost had a close win over Ortega. He's right there. I think one more minute down, if he didn't get caught with that submission, he could have won that fight. Uh, I just think it comes down to Dos Anjos was training for this five-round fight. He was training for uh, a very good fighter in Rafael Faziv. Moicano flew from Brazil earlier this week. He has to cut a lot of weight, uh, and it's a short-notice fight. And we've seen, obviously, you know, you get a lot of credit for taking a short-notice fight, being a man to step up. Bobby Green got all that attention last week, but it's like, these guys are still coming off of a fight. And like I said, you're going to get little injuries, little tweaks here and there. Just that time change of coming from Brazil here, cutting away on the airplane. It's just crazy. I think it's just too much for him. I really wish it would have been the Islam fight, but uh, I just think the RDA is going to come out on top here. And then we'll see who he calls out on the mic, you know, because he still goes back and forth with him and McGregor. They both, that's a fight that they've always wanted. That's a fight that yeah. they, need, they always wanted to be done between both of them. And, you know, he's at that age now where I think that he wants a big money fight and he needs to win this fight here dominantly. I think, you know, get either a, a Islam fight or a, a McGregor fight after this. I I wouldn't mind seeing the McGregor. If I have, if, if McGregor's next fight is for the title, I don't know what I'm going to do. Honestly, I don't, I don't know what that, I'm going to do. That's all talk. I think it's one of those. Okay, you know, good. McGregor's one of those guys that uh, he just wants the attention. He always tweet out my next fight is this. And it's always around a big fight time. So like, Whenever there's a big card coming, like the Masvidal Kobe fight, yeah, it's a big yeah, card. Yeah, you're right. he, he sees these guys getting attention. He wants that attention. So what he's doing? Hey, yo, Dana. Hey, yo, could you could you say this real quick? Say that. Yeah, yeah I can't wait for McGregor's next fight. Blah blah blah. But like, I don't see him training. He looks very thick at the Bellator fight. Like he looked big. I, yeah, I don't think I, he, he looks in the two hundred. So he did look thick. I hear you. Yep. Unless the next fight's at one seventy, I don't see him uh, cutting out of fifty five anytime soon. Or even like people were talking about July. I don't think it's happening. Anything's happening in July. Maybe the end of the year. Yeah, I hear you. I want to ask you about Kevin Holland real quick. Uh, cutting down to one seventy. What do you think? I, I I know we're not gonna. We're about to go to the main event. But what do you think about Holland down? And I'm always curious when guys move down into your division. You know. Um. Uh. I mean, I think he was never a guy that cut a lot of weight. I think he was always exactly. a guy that would weigh in at one eighty three, one eighty two, and you're like, why is this guy weighing in at that? 
And he would always say, yeah, I mean, I don't really cut weight. Uh, you know, he has a, a very fun style, a very good striking, but it just comes down to his grappling. There's a lot of grapplers at 170, a lot of great wrestlers at 170, and that was his issue at 85. He's going to be the bigger guy at this division, but I think we got way better wrestlers at 170 than we do at 85. Interesting. And top yeah. heavy guy. So, like, this is a fun fight for him against a, a Cowboy Oliveira, who's a, it's a good test for him to see where he's at at 170. Because Oliveira has been a guy that, you know, it's, he's never just going to roll over for you. He's always going to be in there. He's always going to bang with you. And I think it's going to be more of a striking battle than anything. And it, I think it's just going to be a fun fight. Oliveira also has good grappling. So, like, we'll he see does. if Kevin Holland's grappling his strength if he's actually been working on it or not uh but i know i've been seeing him around he's been working out with eric nixick at extreme victory i know he's been going out there in vegas a lot so he's getting different looks so you see him putting the work in we'll see if the, it's paying dividends or not so before i let you talk about this main event i won't say much um but joe osborne who's a handicapper for odd shark and he was on with uh on the anakin for him podcast this week and he taught he's trying to find value because colby's a very heavy favorite and so he's sort of like Colby Covington by decision. And whether you like that or not, the idea to me that I'm going to get 25 minutes of these dudes in there together, it's like I can't even imagine seeing these guys for 25 minutes because I, it's hard for me to envision them getting into the octagon because there's so much real animosity. Can't wait for this fight. You know, uh, Masvidal number six in, six in the world, you know, right behind this dude. Um, you know, I, I don't know, man. To me, this is really just about the entertainment. A lot. Who can, just sort of give me both sides of it? See me how you tell me how you think Jorge could get it done. I know where your heart's gonna be. Break it down. Yeah, I mean, like you said, I feel Jorge taking this fight, it shows that he really wants that title fight. He, like he really wants to go, he's really thinking about the the belt. Because he could have sat there, he could have fought a Nate Diaz, he could have waited, fought a McGregor. It doesn't matter who he's gonna fight, he could have took an easier fight, I feel like, and he would have still made the same amount of money. Uh, this is obviously a big tension. He, he really doesn't like Kobe, but Kobe's still a hard guy to fight. He's a hard guy to uh, a hard guy, a hard test. And coming off of two losses in a row, like Masvidal, you know, a third loss in a row really is going to hurt your career. And it's really going to have the fans like really kind of like where McGregor's at, where it's like, yeah, just shut up now. Like we're tired of you. Oh, I'm going to fight for the title, this, this, and this. And it's like, you don't have that same hype. You don't have that same confidence as he once did because he's losing. And you know, whether you're a superstar or not, winning is what people want to see. Winning is everything, and you have to win. So if he goes out there, gets taken down at will, and, you know, Kobe's on top of you, beating the crap out of you a little bit, and talking, Kobe would be the type to talk trash to you in the cage if he's on top of you and he knows that he's really piecing you up, then it's really going to be a bad look for you and a bad look for your brand. And I feel like Masvidal's brand so high right now that, you know, I think that he's really taking this fight serious, and he really needs this win. Because the loser of this fight, whether you're Kobe or Masvidal, like you said, your career goes a whole different way. Uh, you're not in the title talks no more. You're not in the top of the division anymore. If Kobe loses this fight, I think that maybe he'll go to wrestling or something like that. Because you lose this fight, where, where do you go? You're not gonna are you gonna you're not gonna cut down to 55. You're not gonna go up to 85. Uh, you're not gonna be looking at Usman anytime soon because you're gonna have to go through a lot harder, more, more harder yep. guys than Masvidal to get yep. there. Yep. Uh, but stylistically, if I'm breaking down this fight, I think that Masvidal has a very good chance. I don't really uh, care about the odds. I know a lot of people are saying that, you know, he just got knocked out. But I think Masvidal is one of those veterans that's been in the game for so long. That knockout really is not going to affect him like that. And Kobe's not a guy that's going to go in there and knock you out. I don't think he's going to make Masvidal any any gun shy. Uh, Kobe agree. gets a lot of takedowns, but a lot of guys get up from underneath him. He's kind of like a, a Marab where Marab will take you down 20 times, but these guys are going to keep getting up. And Masvidal is very good at getting up. And once Masvidal gets up, he has that chance to land that one shot on you. And he's very tricky with the way he hits you and the, uh, the angles he comes from. So I think he could land a good punch shot on Kobe. I know that Kobe's saying that Masvidal lost his chin or whatever, but Kobe also got rocked his last fight, and he got knocked out the fight before that by the same guy, Usman. So I don't think his chin is where he thinks he's at either. And I think that the – for both these guys, I think it's going to end up being a war. And I think that in the end, it's going to come down to cardio. And I think that, I think Masvidal sees a couple weaknesses in Kobe's game. Kobe leaves his body open a lot. And I think that Masvidal's left kick to the body, left his boxing, uh, left hook to the body. I think that Masvidal could really hurt him to the body. 
And I pray that Masvidal drops him with a body shot. <laughs> <laughs> I know you do. You know, and it's like when you're when you're watching these guys against Usman and they're just inferior. Certainly Masvidal was the last two times. It is, you, you forget sometimes. You know what I mean? You know, the, it's the, the recency bias a little bit. I can't wait to see it, man. Um, much more concerned with the fifth-ranked fighter in that division personally, but you know that just is what it is. You know, so I was six short weeks away. So you're looking, you're looking good, man. I don't see you looking pretty lean. You haven't gotten up twenty pounds over one seventy, have you? Well, maybe a little bit. No, no, no. You know, we're especially coming back from training with those guys down there uh, in Vegas. Shout out to Ottoman Azatar. Uh, he put me in a great hotel. Got me with uh, the the room service, free room service. So I was eating very well good. out there, just healthy, being being good, being able to train with Habib and them. Like I said, to be able to train with Habib, who's considered like the Michael Jordan of your sport, to be able to to work with him and learn from him for that week, it was just it was just like an amazing experience, and it made me come back here and it made me level up the way I want to train and the way I want to work and the way that I want to teach the guys in the gym. So our whole gym is on their type of training regimen right now, where I we're going it. we're doing the same stuff that they did. Cause you know, it's, it's the same script with these guys and it's working for every single one of them. So why should I change from, well, you know, they're, if it's working for them, let's try it here. Let's work it for us. So I, I learned, picked up a lot from them guys that week, picked up a lot of mentality uh, and picked up a lot of weaknesses in my game where, all right, I need to work this a little bit more. If you have me telling you do this, this, and this, that means, all right, I'm going to be working on that all week, all, all month, the next six weeks. And it's just going to be a whole different fighter when you see me in the cage with Luke. Oh, dude. I, all right. So we just end the show and then I'll ask you some real specific questions about some of that stuff. Cause that is some good shit. Anyway, we appreciate y'all being with us. It's 57 down. Remember the show. We'll be back next Thursday night, March 10th. And then it's going to start creeping on Bilal's fight and we don't know what's going to happen, but we will be with you Thursday as best we can. We appreciate you being with us tonight was a good one for everybody. Cody Merrow, Bilal Muhammad. I'm Jason Anik. Have a good night later. Peace. 